Just don't. Video over. Okay, just kidding. For some reason, this video has been requested a lot, and I really do not understand why. Perhaps you all just want to make me suffer by forcing me to use who I consider to be the worst blade in the entire game. Electra not only belongs to the worst weapon class in the game of Shield Hammers, but she also has nothing going for her outside of that either, and it all combined to make a blade I would pretty much consider useless. Of course, maybe you were able to use Electra and have plenty of success yourself somehow, but I'm going to try to explain why I think that in this video. It's going to be a fun one today as we get to bash a little girl at every corner and explain why Electra really is just that bad. But if you still want to make her work after that and try to use her, then we'll take a look at a setup that I think can make her serviceable. If you enjoy this type of guide content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to all of the future Blade guides, both good and bad, because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. Electra is a shield hammer, and as such, I think she will function best on Morag. Zeke is also a decent option since he has a good launch art and okay art with the kid, but overall Morag is superior with a great topple art and some good things outside of that. The Shield Hammer class has an underwhelming auto attack stat, reaching 1315 with the Atakion chip, and the critical hit rate is of course abysmal, only maxing out at 10%. They do get the highest possible block rate in the game, being able to reach 58% with the Dilaton chip, so that can be considered a positive. Her defense values are pretty solid as you might expect from a tank class weapon at 30% physical defense and 25% ether defense, giving her some decent defense mitigation. If she ever manages to get aggro anyway. She also comes with a max health mod of 15%, making her driver additionally tanky with a higher max health pull. Her cooldown is 4 for average availability when swapping, which is probably the best thing to do if you're using Electra. Her stats on paper don't look that bad though, or much different from other hammers, so let's take a look at that skill tree. Electra's first skill is Clangy Girl. This will boost her block rate by 10% at level 1, rising up to 20% at level 5. This is additive block rate, meaning she can potentially reach up to 78% with the Dilaton Core Chip, which is pretty dang impressive and gives her some nice defensive utility. Blocking attacks will reduce all damage by half and nullify critical hits, making them pretty good to get. This is the exact same skill that Poppy Alpha has and is one of the reasons she can become a defensive juggernaut, but Electra is not Poppy Alpha and does not get access to very useful things like Poppy Swap. And while 20% block rate is nice, it can be underwhelming also since block rate isn't a super important stat in this game and it's usually easily to get healing on attacks that can't just straight up one-shot you. Still, this is probably her best skill, which is a bad sign if you're a fan of Electra. Electra's second skill is Zappy Girl. This will increase her aggro every second. The specific value of this is 5 at level 1, rising up to 30 at level 5. This skill is terrible, and let me explain to you why. So aggro in this game is separated into two categories. The first is damage aggro, which is just your damage dealt divided by 2, is added as aggro. The second is arts aggro. Basically this value is that every art and special in the game has a certain amount of aggro assigned to it, and this value will scale with driver level. Tank arts and specials have more aggro on these values, but eventually damage aggro will easily outscale this. Consider also that many offensive blades can get into the hundreds of thousands of damage on arts, which adds like 50,000 aggro each. A value of 30 aggro every second is nothing. Worst of all, aggro will deplete at a value of 75 per second, so this basically means you aren't even gaining aggro. You're just losing it at a slightly slower rate. It's garbage and a completely useless and meaningless value. This skill basically does nothing, especially when damage gets more optimized later in the game. This will not help Electra keep aggro at all. It is an awful skill. Electra's final skill is Sparky Girl. This will counter attacks with 240% ether damage at level 1, rising up to 400% at level 5. This is basically a zombie skill from the last video, but I do have a small correction to make. If a skill says it counters attacks with physical damage, then it is an evasion spike and will do extra damage every time you evade attacks. If it says Ether Damage, it is a damage spike, so every time you get hit, you do damage back to the enemy. That makes slightly more sense for a zombie and a tank class blade like Electra, and it's just another example of how the descriptions in this game are pretty terrible. But 400% Ether Damage is just the driver Ether value times 4 every time you get hit, which is what, 2000 at most? It's another useless ability that doesn't really do anything for her, and to even use it, you have to have aggro in the first place, and let me just tell you, her skills do nothing to help with this. She will have an extremely hard time gaining aggro if you even try to set her up as offensively as possible. You'd pretty much need weak blades surrounding her to even have a chance at that. All around, her skills are terrible. 
Block rate might be okay, but how is she going to be very useful if you can't get aggro to begin with to take advantage of that block rate? And that's not even all that's bad about her. Let's move on to her specials. Electra's level 1 special is Bang Bang Bound. It is an ether based 3 hit special with a damage ratio that is below the standard average at 285 at level 1, 410 at level 5, and 456 at max affinity, because Electra really needed to have the lower damage ratio with her already weak damage. It has a small radius at the least, and hey, it looks like it might even have an okay bonus effect of doing extra damage to toppled enemies. After all, Morag has a topple art, right? Nope, it still sucks. The speed of this special is terrible. It's easily one of the slowest level 1 specials we've seen so far, and if you topple an enemy and try to use this special immediately afterward, you're not even going to hit the enemy before they stand back up with this. You'd basically need another topple art of the team, use it when the enemy gets broken, and hope your AI does the topple in time. Or you can run a topple extension item, which might make it work better. I suppose you could also set up a fusion with a level 4 right after it gets toppled in chain attack as well, but even then Electra isn't going to be doing much in chain attacks. The speed of this special makes it feel awful to use and can leave you vulnerable for a while. Not that it matters though, you're not going to have aggro. Electra's level 2 is Shocking Assault. This is a single hit ether based special. Good news is that this special doesn't have a terrible damage ratio as it actually manages to hit 609 at level 5 when at max affinity, which is closer to the average. Bad news is that this special is still slow as heck to use compared to most specials in the game, and this seems to be a very bad trend for Electra. The bonus effect increases damage to launched enemies, and once again this can be difficult to take advantage of properly because of the speed, but if you try to use it after a topple and have a decently reliable launch art, it can still work. It has nothing else notable about it, just another pretty slow special that can be annoying to use, and the single hit makes it awful for chain attacks and overdrive among other things. Electra's level 3 special is Rolling Thunder. This is a 3 hit special with an alright radius and a decent enough damage ratio of 500 level 1, 700 at level 5, and 748 at max affinity. It even comes with that coveted 25% critical hit modifier for the extra 2 percentage points of critical hit chance. But of course, this is Electra, and this special might just be the slowest special yet. It takes forever to come out and get all the hits done with. Sure, speed may not be the most important thing all the time, but battle fluidity and being able to do other things in battle is also nice so you're not locked in place waiting for a special to end. It really sucks that all of her specials just have terrible speed and make her not very fun to use either when combined with the rest of the Shield Hammer kit. The bonus effect is increasing aggro drawn, but honestly it's pointless when you have no damage to get aggro to begin with. It's not going to help enough. Electra's level 4 is Electrifying Show. This is easily her best special. For one, the speed doesn't matter as much for level 4s, and since it's level 4, it gets innate bonuses like freezing driver combos and invincibility for you and your allies that will probably have aggro. It also increases damage from the front by 100%, which is finally a useful bonus effect for Electra since she will likely try to be in front of enemies to take advantage of this. Unfortunately, it is also tied for the lowest damage ratio we've seen at only 900 because Electra just cannot have good things. At the very least, it'll outdamage your other specials and feel more useful all around if you actually build up to this special with the slower shield hammer arts and longer art cooldowns. For setup, I am using the Tachyon chip. Yes, you can get another 20% block rate with Dilaton, but the Tachyon has a bonus effect which can help Electra out a decent amount to try to get aggro. It probably won't succeed often, but it's at least there. The extra attack stat is also very nice to do more damage. Plus, extra block rate doesn't really make a super noticeable difference in most fights if you ask me. Electra cannot have good things, so she only gets one aux core slot. Since Shield Hammers have the lowest total DPS and Electra has no damage increases on her skill tree with slow specials and a single aux core slot, this makes Electra the worst DPS blade in the game. Probably every common blade except for Shield Hammers with no slots will outdamage her. No, I am not kidding, she is that bad. But if you have one slot, you may as well make the most of it with Affinity Max Attack and try to do something at the very least. For accessories, Divine Van Braces are a good damage increase option that doesn't hinder her defensive abilities like Abyss Mask and is a good item to consider. I am also running Rainbow Belt because increased topple duration is nice and helps support the team and you might even be able to get the level 1 bonus effect. For similar reasons, I'm running Crystal Earrings because if you don't have aggro, may as well make sure your party members can carry you with chain attacks and you can get party gauge fast to revive them when they die since they will have aggro instead of you. If you want to go all in on surviving with zero damage, you can also consider Survivor's Foot Gear, and you probably won't ever die, but then you might be doing only double digit damage when your arts, so do that at your own risk. For pouch items, double meats with art recharge are a good option since Electra likes meats, and this is something nice Electra actually does have. Maybe the only thing. Let's take a look at how to use Electra practically. 
I guess. So starting things off with a lecture, we might be able to reliably get aggro for the first 10 seconds of combat since we are a tank blade and we've got the absorb aggro and everything, but nope, Tora just took aggro anyway, so I guess that dream is dead. I tried to use level 1 on the topple here, Tora does launch a little bit ahead of time, but even then, even with the rainbow belt, I still don't even finish this special until the launch is almost expired. So yeah, good luck taking advantage of that bonus effect. I do get the, with the Crystal Earrings bonus, we do get to do the chain attack pretty early here. And you're going to see Electra's wonderful chain attack damage right here. But luckily we have allies that can carry the damage for us. So we've got Cutie Pie here. She's going to do a decent amount. I don't have her set up completely for damage right now. Not perfectly anyway, but we can still get a decent amount of damage off here. Tora has taken aggro from us once again, but that's alright. We can maybe use our damage and our amazing arts to try to get aggro back. We might eventually do that. And it's not really working very well. So one thing you can do with Electra is if you do have another blade on Morag or someone who has Electra with that does have a decent ability to get aggro, does have a lot of damage, you can use them and then swap to Electra later and then try to take advantage, advantage of her defense ability after that. Or you can just take advantage of the Crystal Earrings party gauge gain and revive your allies when they inevitably die since they have aggro. Don't worry though, we're gonna get that big damage bonus from hitting level 4 from the front right here. We're just gonna do the biggest... 1 million volt here. We do so much damage with it. And then Cutie Pie is going to be carrying the damage for us with an electrolysis here. I do I do manage to get the topple off though, the important electro topple arts. We can do even more damage here. And you could definitely end the fight right here with a chain attack if you wanted to, but we're gonna show off more of the amazing power of Electra. Do that big over 100,000 damage with that art. You saw that? The mountain crusher? She's real she's really good, guys. Like she's really good, I promise. If I keep doing damage numbers like that, I might be able to get aggro back, maybe, possibly. Actually, no, I won't. It's not going to happen. So even with Tachyon Ship and some decent offensive gear on Electra, I'm not getting aggro back. I'm. It's just not happening. So if you went more defensive, or if you tried to lean into her block rate strength, if you went the block rate up core chip or something instead of hitting max attack, you definitely wouldn't be having aggro. If you went Dilaton Ship, you definitely wouldn't be having aggro right now. If you can't get aggro with this kind of setup, then what hope is there to get aggro in any kind of normal setup if you have any damage on any of your AI party members? Pretty much the only way to get aggro with Electra is going to be, like I said earlier, doing damage with a more damaging blade and then swapping to her. So if you want to really use Electra, that's probably the only way to do it. Unfortunately, Electra just has too many other weaknesses besides that as well, like this slow special speed making it a pain to use her at times. But, you know what, you can still use this decent setup, this decent Crystal Earrings chain attack supportive setup to um, take out some enemies if you want to, even Cloud Sea King can on normal mode, you can still do that. So that's what we're going to do here, so I'm going to end it early because I don't want to show you the entire like 7 minute long fight because that can be a little bit boring here. But just watch the power of Electra here, where we can get this nice party gauge game by hitting the specials perfectly, doing all the QTEs, and then we can do some chain attacks pretty quickly in these fights. And while Electra is not going to be doing any damage on her own or even getting aggro, she can at least contribute in some ways. And if your allies manage to die, you can get that party meter back and revive them. And you'll be having a great time taking on this high health enemy here. Once again, Cutie Pie and Elmar are going to be carrying pretty much everything here, as you see. The damage is much less impressive on this enemy compared to Tyranna Titan, since he has a much higher max HP threshold. But that's not a big deal, though. We can do those, um... Extra chain attacks with the orb, because we've got Cutie Pie on water elements, so she can use electrolysis and give us an orb on King Ken here. And maybe if we can get this level 2 done any day now, we might be able to actually use electrolysis. So I'll go ahead and do the chain attack on the launch, because we can build another one up really quickly here anyway. So we're going to get that fusion combo bonus damage, except Electra's level 1 is so slow, we can't even keep the bonus effect very long, because he's going to fall to the ground. I tried to get the bonus with, with Tora there, but you know, he fell to the ground too early because launch is animation based and Electra's level 1 is just the slowest thing in the universe. Unfortunate, but that's just the way the world works sometimes. So Tora's sitting on Electrolysis here. We're going to try to take advantage of that to get an even more powerful two warp, or one orb chain attack here where we can get two rounds. Right now you're going to see the power of Alexa's defense and blocking capabilities. She's not taking much damage at all, only 254 from that when she blocks the attack. So, I mean, she does have some good defenses there. Even on that attack right there, she's able to survive with no issues. We barely took any damage from that. So, yeah, Electra's defenses might be good, and as long as your allies can manage to survive, I guess that's also a good thing. And 
if you actually somehow do get aggro, then you can actually not take much damage. I guess that's a pretty good thing to do. Honestly, I feel like it's pretty evidently clear right now that Electra's damage is solely lacking. She's going to struggle to get aggro, and even with her abilities that would seem to function well for a tank blade, like the extra block rate and the damage when you get hit, the eat the damp the counter spike there. It's just not useful and doesn't really do anything at all. I set up a fusion combo here because that's one of the things Electra can try to do somewhat. And we set that up. I tried to get the topple, but we missed, of course. And now we're going to get a little bit extra damage with Cutie Pie at the very least and Elma. And you'll eventually be able to get through Ken's entire health bar if you keep doing this. If you were to just use Electra on her own merits, though, and not rely on a party, it would take a much longer time than this, though. And if you have weaker blades to try to have aggro on Electra, I guess that's a possibility, but it's just not worth it at all. You can see she can't even damage cap a single hit on a fusion combo with a 1,000 damage multiplier. It's pathetic. She, she does nothing. Cutie Pie can damage cap even without the fusion combo there, basically. Elma's doing significantly less damage in this chain attack. I think she lost max affinity from being too far away from Rex, but that's not really a big deal. She's still doing more damage than Electra. Electra actually lost Max Affinity 2 from that because of um, some complications there. Oh, so here's something pretty cool. If the enemy summons extra reinforcements that aren't getting hit by your allies, then Electra will have aggro because she can actually draw the aggro with one of her blade arts. And they're not going to be doing much damage to you at all because you're Electra and you're really tanky if you can somehow manage to get aggro. Look at all the damage they're not doing to you. That's really impressive. Definitely a reason to consider using Electra. She's such a great blade. Okay, you guys are probably tired of hearing me using sarcasm at this point. The point is, this game has enough flexibility. You can beat any enemy you want to with any blades if you have a good enough setup and if you really know what you're doing. And I think that's pretty evidently clear by this. But that still doesn't make Electra any less terrible here. She doesn't really do anything for you. She can't keep aggro as a tank. Her skills don't really accomplish anything. She has the lowest DPS in the entire game. There's really just no reason to use her. I'm not going to torture you guys by making you watch most of the rest of this fight, so we're going to be stopping this right here, I think. That's going to cover it for this guide if you can even call it that instead of just trashing the worst blade in the entire game. But I still hope you guys learned something and learned why I consider Electra to be the worst blade in this game and at least find this type of content useful or interesting. If you enjoyed this blade guide, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below, like the video, and support me any other way you want to because I appreciate all of it and it does help out. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching and have a blessed day.